Recording in progress. Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday, um, the beginning of Holy Week and it's a very special, special week in, for us Christians. So um, I just want to begin with a prayer and then we're going to do something really special. So we're going to follow, after my prayer, we're going to, all of us, all of us, we're going to follow Pastor Rob out and we're going to pick up. I think he's going that way. We're going to follow him out. We're going to grab a palm branch and we're going to come back in singing. And then we're going to stand, put them wherever he shows us to put them. <laughs> I hope you do good. And then, um, and then we're going to stand in our spots and sing. Okay, so I'll begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you loved us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to be our saviour. We thank you that you've made a way for us to be your people and, and to be close to you again. And, and um, we thank you so much. We thank you for Jesus and we ask that your spirit would be with us um, when when the Pharisees told Jesus to make his people be quiet, he said, if they didn't praise me, the very stones would um, cry out. And I pray that that would be us this morning, that if we didn't sing your praises, the stones would cry out. So be with us, send your spirit to us, and help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to, as the first song begins, we're going to follow Pastor Rob. Turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Come out your way 
strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away cause when we see We'll have our second song now. Um, and they are holy God. Whisper and 
Beautiful, thank you. Would anyone like to do a reading for me? Anyone? You've got the Isaiah one. Yeah, you would, Sam? Cool. If you come out here, you can do the Isaiah 50 reading, which is a beautiful one. Thank you. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have, therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sam. Uh, does anyone want to read the gospel? Okay. Are you well? Thank you, Andrea. Today's gospel reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 11, reading from verses 1 to 11. And it's called, Jesus Comes to Jerusalem as King. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you'll find a colt tied there, which no one else has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the ground, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of Christ. Thank you, Andrea. And I just love, I love it from the book of Luke because it, it adds one little thing that I've always loved and that's what I prayed in the prayer this morning. The Pharisees um, said to Jesus to rebuke the people for shouting out and, um, and when they said that to him, he said if they didn't shout out, the very rocks, the very stones would shout out and I just, I've always thought that was absolutely beautiful and that's the way that it should be for each of us. We're, we need to praise God, it's good for us. He knows that we need to praise him. But um, now we're going to have a time of sharing and there's just one little thing that I'd like to share. And I can't really give you details, but it's happened again and again and again in my life. You know, we, we pray to God sometimes for help and the help that we want is the help that's in our head, the, the thing that we think that God should do. And... Um, 
I don't know, my life, nine times out of ten, the thing that I want him to do and the, th the help that I think I need isn't the help that he knows I need. Um, he helps me every single time I ask him for help, but sometimes I don't realise it until later on. I see, I, I see later on that if he had done what I wanted him to, there would have been a disaster. But because he stopped me from doing whatever I wanted or he um, made a different way, it's always better when it's God's way. That's why we say God's will be done when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Um, he, he sees the bigger picture. It's like a parent who, who knows that their child's going to get in trouble, but the child doesn't know. They can't understand why they're being told they can't do something. He sees the bigger picture always. And whatever we're going through, he wants us to trust him, even when it doesn't look like he's doing something, he's doing something. So uh, I just, um, I would encourage you to remember that this morning. Does anyone else have anything that they'd like to share? Any, you, it can be about anything. If ever you have a testimony, don't be afraid. This is the time to come out and do it, so. Do you, Cecilia? All right then. Oh goodness me, I have to trust God a lot now. <laughs> oh dear Lord, please let us be Lord. What do you want to say? You forgot. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hang on, come back. We're going to have a kids' address. So if there are any children, could you please come out? It, Cecilia. Time to come out. Cecilia? Good. Okay. Hello. Thank you for coming out. We just have to wait for a second. Okay. All right. So we did something pretty special this morning. We we walked in. Do you all right? <laughs> we walked in with all these palm branches and we were singing a song. And um, why why we were singing a Hosanna song? Why do you think we were doing that? Yeah, you know why we were doing that? We were doing that because it's a special Sunday. What Sunday is it? It is. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. <laughs> Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is like a celebration. We celebrate all kinds of things, don't we? We celebrate birthdays. My friend Melissa had a birthday yesterday. <laughs> we celebrated. Sorry, I had to do that. Happy birthday for yesterday, Melissa. So, but Palm Sunday is a celebration, and it's a celebration of because it's the start of Holy Week. Can you say Holy Week? Holy Week. It's the start of Holy Week. And Holy Week is the beginning of something really special. Jesus, when Jesus made his entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, he rode on a donkey and he was fulfilling a prophecy that the king would ride in on a donkey. And a lot of people recognized him as the king. Well, they knew he was someone really special. Why do you think Jesus people thought Jesus was something really special. They'd seen him do all kinds of miracles. They'd seen him, they'd seen him heal people who were sick. They'd seen him make blind people see. They saw him, they, they heard that he'd raised someone from the dead, a man named Lazarus. Have you ever heard that story? Yeah. So, so they, they'd heard all these amazing things and they thought, yep, he's the one. And they didn't really understand what kind of king Jesus was going to be, but they knew he was someone really great. And so that's why we were yelling out this morning, because we know exactly who, who Jesus was. We know that he was the king of kings, okay? And we know exactly what he did for us to save us. And this Holy Week is about that. It's remembering what Jesus did to save us. What did Jesus do to save us? Look 
prophet, yes, he died, but what else did he do? He rose up again, didn't he? He rose up again. So he didn't just die, but he rose again from the dead. Jesus, if there's one thing that I've known from all the years that I've known Jesus, it's that from the very beginning, he's never really done what people expect. Like, people would have expected a king to... Where would people expect a king to be born? Someone who was going to grow up to be a king? In a palace. In a palace, yeah. That, but where was Jesus born? In a stable. In a stable, wasn't he? He was born in a stable. In a manger. In a, yeah, in a manger. So he wasn't, for starters, he wasn't born where a king would be. Would you expect um, a king to ride on a donkey? No, you wouldn't. I think you would be um, on one of those things. That it... <laughs> in a chariot. But, yeah, they did expect the king to ride in on a donkey because it had been prophesied. Well, some people did. But um, would you expect a king to, be, to give his life and let himself be beaten and, and die on a cross? Not exactly, would you? They would have expected the king to be out there chopping people's heads off or whatever, you know, and being mighty and everything else. But Jesus was actually being mighty. The most mighty thing ever was done when Jesus gave his life on the cross and then defeated the devil. He rose up again and, and um, made a way for us to be with him forever. He won the victory. He actually did the most powerful thing, even though it looked like the most, like the weakest thing. So I want you to remember that in your life. You know, we can't always see what's happening. Sometimes things look really bad, but something, God is doing something mighty behind the scenes. And we don't always know what that is until later. So if you pray to God and you ask him for help, I'm going to say to you to trust him because he does big things when we can't even see or know what's happening. Jesus will do big things in your life if you ask him to, okay? So we're going to say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and we thank you that you gave your son Jesus so that we might be free and we might be your people. Thank you that you are our king and that you have the name above all names. And we thank you that, that we can trust you even when it doesn't look good. It didn't look good when you were on the cross, but it sure looked good when you rose up again. And so... Help us to trust you like that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go. There's a colouring picture up the back. Cecilia will show you. I love to do the corn. You love to do the what? Yeah, I love to do the corn. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so... I thought, have we got one more song? <laughs> this is what happens when I... Okay, we're going to have a, a song now. This one is called God You Are. It's actually a new one for our children's congregation. So um, to have a go at it, and hopefully um, even if you're not really um, good at picking it up, the words are going to really touch you as you think about what path you've gone for from the cross.
we, we're going to have the message now, but I just want to say, just listening to that song, you know, that's the kind of God he is, that he would step into the dark. And I think that's the kind of people he wants us to be too, not afraid. Step into the dark and help people. Stretch out your hand to people. Go where, go where he leads you and um, remem remember that that sometimes that's what we have to do. That's what he did for us. So. Thanks, Annette. Yes, well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, and as we head our little procession and everything, we've got these uh, palms on the floor and um, lots of interesting readings too for, for Palm Sunday. It's... Uh, uh, fascinating that that Old Testament reading, you know that uh, uh, the Lord has given me an instructed tongue and um, so on. Really good stuff. All right, Palm Sunday. Jesus rides into town on a donkey, and everybody starts waving palm leaves and and uh, shouting uh, uh, Hosanna. <clears throat> you might have been like me and heard that story for quite some time. I don't know how many times I've heard it. Certainly once a year, but uh, um, then, you know, in Sunday school, you know, you'd have that story as well. All the people did these wonderful things. But I just want to take you back there. Let's get it in context. Like, was it just that Jesus was riding along on a donkey <clears throat> and suddenly, <coughs> excuse me, People decided to break off some branches and put on the ground. That's probably not the complete story. Well, I know it's not the complete story because there was a, there was a tradition every year there was a big celebration in Jerusalem. There was a celebration at the temple and part of that celebration would be people would um, take palm leaves, probably a bit bigger than that, <clears throat> probably more like these big ones here. No, got to go bigger. There's a bigger one. I did see a bigger one around somewhere. But anyway, those big, great big things, probably date palm, you know, the big date palm fronds because they were popular around Israel too. And so there, there would have been this situation where there were people walking the streets with palm branches because right, that's what you did. Once a year, there was this big celebration. It went for a whole week and people would walk into, the, into Jerusalem, probably come from miles away, and then they'd join in the celebration and it would eventually result in people walking around the altar and it was the once, it's the one, once a year day where ordinary people could go in and, and actually see the, the big altar. Not the not the Holy of Holies in the temple, but in the temple court. Normally people couldn't just wander in there, but this once a year you could go in there and then you break your palm leaves on the... Well, you know, probably the young rat bags would try and do that. They'd probably touch the, you know, um, be all sedate and, and proper and touch the altar with their palm leaves, but the young blokes would probably jump up and, and s try and smash the palm branch on the horns of the altar horns, corners of the altar and on top of the altar is where you could burn your, the priest would burn the sacrifices so they'd smash their palm branches on the altar, so that's all, it's all going on now legend had it that the Messiah would come while they sang Hosanna, in other words that's this time of the year, that's the song for this time of the year um, and so there's this so picture this scene. There's all of these people walking into Jerusalem, some carrying palm branches, um, walking in there, probably with a snack, you know, a little bag with a snack in it, walking in there, walking into Jerusalem toward the temple. And some of them would every now and then sing the songs that were popular that time of year, which is Hosanna, Blessed are you, he who comes in the name of the Lord, something like that. I don't know how it went. 
Uh, we don't have the tune. We have some of the words, some of the psalms. Are there, you'll see a, a psalm with those words in it. That's, I think it's Psalm 118 has, has those words and it's that kind of setting. Now, as they're going in, suddenly something starts to happen behind them. There's some bloke riding a donkey. A lot of people would have recognised him. He's this guy that's been growing in popularity over the last few, few years and months. Not everyone would have seen him for years, but certainly recently. He's been growing in popularity because he's been doing amazing things. He's a great teacher, but then he's been healing people as well. And there's some wonderful things happening. And so they turn and look. And there's this guy riding a donkey. Now, every good Jewish person at the time would have heard legends of the Messiah will come one day. They would hear it every, every year at the Passover. They would talk about the Messiah coming because they would set a place for the Messiah just in case he came to their house. So every Passover meal had a vacant um, place just in case the Messiah came. So they'd wait. There was this expectation that that was built into their culture. One of the stories was that he would come like King David. King David, that, uh, that king who, who was virtually the founder of Israel. Yes, we know that Moses was, but King David brought it into a kingdom. You know, he made it prosperous and powerful and protected them from, from the other nations. And, uh, and, and King David... He wasn't a king like other kings. He, he wouldn't lord it over people. You know, he, sure, he wielded great power, but he was greatly loved by the people. One of the things that King David did was he rode on a donkey. That says something. Uh, normally, a king wouldn't go near a donkey because they're a beast of burden. A king would ride a horse or a chariot, one of those things. <laughs> a chariot, preferably a gold chariot. Or be in one of those, you know, boxes with carried by people. But whatever, king wouldn't ride a donkey. But a gracious king would ride a donkey. And what's this thing about a colt that's never been ridden? Oh, in Egyptian, I mean Egyptian, where did I get that from? In Israelite um, folklore and in the, in the law, you know, when they were to build an altar, they were to build it out of unhewn rocks. In other words, rocks that had never been broken, a natural rock. Um, sacrifice, an animal without spot or blemish, not the old one that was, you know, been used or been used as a beast of burden for a while and, or wasn't quite good enough to eat. No, it was the without spot or blemish, something that hadn't been used. So a cult that had never been ridden? Oh, that's holy stuff. That's stuff that's suitable for, for God. Right? So there are all of these little clues coming together and here we have Jesus. They rec start to recognise Jesus riding. And what are they? They didn't write a new song suddenly. Oh, here comes Jesus riding on a donkey. Therefore, I shall pen this, this new ode to the uh, Messiah who's coming. No, it was a song that they already used for that time of the year and legend had it that the Messiah would come when they sang Hosanna. And so what did they do? They started singing Hosanna. Can you imagine the lights coming on in people's minds as all of this stuff started coming together? And so they start laying down the palm branches breaking branches off of other trees that are around the place and putting them down there. That's still not enough. My cloak, I'll put that down to make a, a carpet, a welcome mat for the, the king of kings. They start, to, it all comes together. Um, story comes to an amusing anti-climax when he goes into the, into the city, has a look around and goes home. I mean, <laughs> come on. You know, we'd, surely we'd like to... I think there's something in that. 
Why, why is it there? There's something in it that there's a reason why the story finishes there. Why even write that down? Jesus had a look around and then went home. I think there's something in that too. Because, see, um, what I was saying before in the first service, and, uh, and I want to say more, so I'm going to summarise very briefly. What I was saying before is, uh, and you can get that on YouTube and catch up if you like, but uh, what I was saying before is that when a, when a king comes, they, they lay down their law, right? The, you know, Moses, when, the, uh, when, the, when Israel was first set up, they lay down the law, they got the Ten Commandments. When a king comes in, uh, into power, when anyone comes into power, they lay down their law. They choose, you know, the prime minister chooses his cabinet. The, um, uh, you know, the king brings in his new decrees. Here's this new king. He comes in and brings his decrees and it's all centering around one thing. It's all centering around one thing and that's relationships. Right? In the epistle reading that we, we read in the first service today, Philippians uh, talks about Jesus laying down his life and coming humbly. Right? Paul says, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus. And he spells it out. Jesus himself says it uh, on Maundy Thursday. Now, this is a Maundy Thursday reading, and we'll get into that on uh, uh, Maundy Thursday. But he, he says himself, a new commandment I give to you. Are you hearing that? A new king comes into power. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And there we have the blueprint for the Christian life, the, the, the new law that the king has brought in. We often miss it. I think, by and large, the church misses it too. Have a look around. We're, what's the big commandment? Love one another. What do we do? Oh, we want to get our doctrines right, we're going to get our teachings right, and we're not going to talk to anyone who doesn't agree with us. Right? No, got that wrong. It's not actually the most important thing. Most important thing, love one another. Then, yes, get your teachings right. But love one another, that's number one. That's the ultimate. That's the big rule, the big goal, the big law we must follow. Love one another. It's not much of a law, is it? You know, go and love one another. Go and be nice to each. That's, that's not much of a law. H how do we do that? There's, uh, well, yes, we can see the Ten Commandments are then examples of that, of how we do that, how we live that out. Uh, but it's more than that, isn't it? It goes deeper. It goes, it starts with our attitude. Paul says, in your attitude to one another, in your relationships with one another, have the same attitude to that of Christ Jesus. In your relationships with one another, that's what it's all about. It's all about relationships. It's all about relationships. How are your relationships? How do you relate to one another? How can you love one another? How, how do you love one another? How do you express that love for each other? Sometimes we need to go take a little step back and say, where is that love coming from? What it, you know, in your relationships with one another, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Okay, so I need to take a little step back. I need to look at Christ Jesus and say, what did he do? How did he relate to people? What was his attitude to us? And we see that his attitude to us was to give up his life for us, to come down from heaven to earth and, and live a life of a normal human being, laying down his rights as God, laying down his power as the, the Son of God and living a normal human life, 
relating to each of each other, relating to other people as human beings do. That's that's what he did. He gave up his power, came down to earth, lived a live his life on this earth and then gave up that life for us that's a that's a big example that's a that's a huge statement of attitude so that was his attitude to us to completely give up his rights for us how are we going with that how are we how are we going with giving up our rights? How are we going up with, with, uh, with giving up what we want for the sake of others? It's, what does that even look like? You know, sometimes our, our Christian life is, is based on, uh, you know, reading a bit about Jesus, learning a bit about Jesus, and then uh, coming along to church and celebrating Jesus, and that's all very good. But uh, if, you know, if someone steps on my toe, you know, I push them away and, um, you know, at the very least, you know, say, get off my foot or something like that. You know, if, uh, if somebody offends me, well, then I, um, I seek retribution. If somebody takes from me, I try and take back. Like, how are we going with that? Maybe we need, to, you know... Ha- how, how close are we to the attitude of Christ Jesus? If somebody offends us, can we turn the other cheek? If somebody steals from us, can we, can we say, well, can I help you with something else? If somebody takes away our rights, if somebody tramples over our rights, can we take a step back and say, well, look, let me, you know, I know that you did that, but... I'm just going to do the best that I can for you. Um, these are these are tall orders. These are these are big, big asks for us. How do we do that? I think the um, that reading that Isaiah reading that Annette read before is there's a there's a secret in there that we often miss, and we see that as a that's a um, uh, a prophecy about Jesus, you know. The Lord has given me instructed tongue, like one being taught. He wakens me morning by morning. The Lord has given me an instructed tongue, like one being taught. It's like we, it's like His voice wakens us in the morning and whispers in our ear that which he's calling us to do or to speak. I think in there is the secret to how we love, how we reach out and, and express love, show love for others. You see, yes, you know, I mentioned before, we've got the Ten Commandments, those are examples of of how we love those are examples of what we do there's lots of examples like that but here god is telling us that not everything is encased in the ten commandments love is a little more flexible than rules needs to be because to express love for one another it's relational we're it's, it's how we relate to that person. In your relationships with one another, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus, not your actions, necessarily. We can't all go to the cross for somebody. wouldn't mean the same. We can't necessarily give up our lives for somebody. But what good would that do? No, in our attitude... Uh, um, in our relationships, our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. So as we seek to be Christ-like with others, we need God to speak to us. It needs to be individual. We need to be woken each morning with his word whispering in our ear, teaching us how we're going to serve him. 
and that's going to be different for each person and it could be different every day depending on where you're going to be what God is going to lead you in, into who you're going to meet what their needs are and how you're equipped to help that's all sounds very complicated doesn't it we just need to be alert we just because if it, if our attitude is right our actions will result correctly if our attitude is right if my attitude is look i i just want to do the best for you in what you're going through right now i want to bring god's blessing to you right now I, I don't know how to do that i want to bring god's blessing to you i don't know how to do that but i'm going to seek ways to do that i'm going to be aware of what i'm going to try and become aware of what you're going through and try and serve you in a way that's going to be meaningful to you and to do that i'm going to be listening to the guidance of the father that i might be able to serve you in his way that sounds difficult doesn't it sounds difficult and, and maybe it is but it's an adventure because what a wonderful experience when when you have this sense of god leading you in service to another human being where you've had the honor of being able to bring blessing into the lives of a life of another person or lives of other people where they've really needed it you see in situation when when you're blessing somebody with exactly what they need then a little minuscule mite you know like half a sandwich can be the wonderful thing that somebody needs whereas something worth a million dollars can be worth nothing to them see if it's exactly what they need it's a true blessing and so when we're guided by god to to bless somebody then the blessing is truly great how, how does that work all right first like that bible verse says morning by morning you come to me um and uh uh yeah you come to me like one being taught anyway i've messed it up <laughs> but anyway um should have it before me but um that's that's the key wake up with god right when you wake up let him let his words be the first words you hear and so well i'm reaching for my phone because i've got the bible app on my phone and i've got a couple of uh, devotional apps too and you can open those and you start and and you can have a little thing that god's speaking to you um wake up with god then open your eyes for god like see what he's going to do go through the day looking for what god is leading you to do and then should be a step should be a third step shouldn't there because that's all the good things you know three step things one wake up to god two open your eyes to what god is doing and three bless somebody in a way that you think they need to be blessed because remember ephesians 2 verse 10 for um uh god is at work in you uh, for we are we are his workmanship created in drop christ jesus for good works which is prepared beforehand for us to walk in them god has got this worked out if you're prepared to listen to him wake up with god open your eyes to what he's doing and then do those works which he has prepared beforehand for you to do that you may walk in them so that's still a bit general but i think it's a good guideline those three steps wake up to god open your eyes to what god is doing 
and then walk in the good works he has prepared beforehand for you to do. And you will bless people. And what happens then? As Jesus says, the new command I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. What happens then? By this, people will know that you are my disciples. By this, people will be able to see Jesus as you bless people in his name. I invite you into this wonderful relationship with God where he commissions you to bless others in his name and shows himself through you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now, and instead of going and playing the guitar, I'm going to go over here uh, and offer an opportunity for prayer. Uh, Sam, yes, Sam will pray too. Yep, and um, there may be there may be something in your life. Maybe you're hearing that God wants to speak to you, or or, or He's teaching you in some way, or calling you into something. Maybe you'd like prayer for that, uh, or maybe you'd like uh, prayer for healing or guidance or hope. Then please come, and we'll pray for you.
Okay. Um, can we just have the Lord's Prayer, Neil? We will have the Lord's Prayer. As we pray this prayer, um, think about the words that you're saying. Think about what we're asking God. His will be done. Uh, we don't often... Um, we usually want our will to be done, don't we? But um, let's think on that as we pray and everything else that we ask for here. So let's begin the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread as we forgive us Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Pastor Rob, would you like to come and pray for us? And, and then I've got a reading I'm going to do, so... Yeah, I better start praying to cover somebody's phone. So. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, uh, for King Jesus, for sending him into the world to begin his new kingship, his lordship. Uh, and we, uh, we submit ourselves to his lordship. We submit ourselves to his kingdom that we might follow his way, the way of love. Father, we thank you for loving us and we pray that you would uh, guide us into the ways of love, the ways of your love. Um, and as we, as we do, Lord, uh, bring us to those people who need to hear your word, who need to uh, experience your love and who need to be blessed by you. We pray, Lord, that you watch over all who... Um, uh, all who suffer, all who find difficulty in getting through the day. We pray that you bless those who, uh, who suffer any discomfort or any pain. We pray for that uh, you would be with those who, um, uh, who have a, a burden in their hearts, that you would free them. Uh, Lord, watch over us every day that we might serve you uh, and that we might listen to you we may wake up with you we pray that you be with our nation lord bless the leaders of our nation bless the uh, those in positions of power that they might that they too might uh, might bring your your attitude of love uh, as their their primary objective we pray that you be with our our local government um, as they've just gone through the election and, and still getting that worked out. We pray that you provide good local government here, bless the people who are being elected and, uh, and bless our community through them. Um, we ta pray too for uh, the uh, rulers of all nations, that they might look to, to caring for people above building power and wealth. Lord, we pray these things in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. You can do it. You can do it after. Yeah. So I just have this beautiful reading from Philippians two, chapter two, beginning at verse five, and it just speaks of of um, the kind of God that we have. So. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. It's the one that Pastor was speaking of before. Um, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By, the very, by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, 
even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And he's our king of all kings. We're going to sing about that in a minute, but pastor is going to bless us first. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our final song. Good morning, everyone. 
Great to see you all this morning. I trust our service has been a blessing for you all. Uh, announcement's going to be really short and sharp today. Uh, obviously, our focus this week as we lead up to Easter. Uh, so you'll see on the screen um, our Easter times. Uh, so for this Holy Week, as we go walking through this Holy Week, come and join us on Thursday night uh, at 6 p.m. So Thursday night, we'll be having a meal and, and remembering that last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. Um, so if you're interested in coming along, being a part of that, um, we'd love to know numbers just so that we can um, get some catering and stuff organised. Um, so there is a sign-on sheet um, just to register your interest. So please fill that out at the door on your way out. Um, there'll be a small uh, cost, about $15 each, just to cover some um, costs for the food and stuff for that for that as well. Um, so please come along, be involved in that. And then obviously Good Friday, 8am, uh, come and join us again on Good Friday morning. Uh, as we remember that time that Jesus died on the cross. And then obviously our celebrations on Sunday at 8 a.m. as well. Uh, come along and uh, enjoy that celebration, uh, knowing that our Lord has risen on that day. Um, so it'd be great to have you all here during those times. Um, even on Sunday, there might be a bit of chocolate there to, to fill the kids full of sugar before they go home, so you can uh, have a wonderful day with them as well. Um, so yeah, come along, get involved. We'd love to see as many of you here over that coming uh, Easter weekend. Um, apart from that, God bless everyone, have a great week and we'll see you then.
Nah, it's alright. 